Okay, we have here today another interesting integral from the UNSW CPMS integration B from 2023. We have the integral from zero to one of one over the floor of one over x dx. Okay, I thought this was a really interesting example because we have the floor in the problem. We've done quite a few problems with the floor, but I do think this is different than some of the other examples we've seen. So like in the past, I've done some problems where it might be, I think we had one where it was like zero to 2023. One was like zero to two. And then we'd have some stuff in the integral and we'd have we'd have the floor somewhere, but not one over X in the floor, maybe just the floor by itself. And we had a specific way to deal with this kind of problem. In some cases we drew the graph and that was helpful, but we also, a lot of times what we do is we just split it up on integer bounds. So we have, you know, the same integral, but we'd split it from zero to one, one to two, two to three. And the reason we did that is because with the floor, it rounds us down to the next greatest integer so like in this first one, this floor of X in this region becomes zero. And then here, if we have a floor, this becomes one. And then here, it becomes two. So it turns out that splitting our integral up on integer bounds seems to work really good in this case. But the trouble is in our integral, we're going from zero to one. So there's no, there's no way to split this up on integer values. But it turns out there's a really similar technique that we can still use on this integral going from zero to one. We just need to break this up a little differently. And instead of starting at zero, I'm going to do is start at one. So for our first one, I'm just going to split this up and the first integral is going to go from one half to one. And then we'll do it again from the second integral. We're going to go from one half to one over three. And then the next one, we'll just do this one. This is going to go from one fourth to one third. And this is actually just going to go on forever. Just notice that we're never quite getting to zero this way. It's just that our bounds are going to be approaching zero when we approach infinity. So now that we have it broken up this way, it's actually not going to be too bad to evaluate it and see what's happening. Like from a half to one, let's just try some point in between. Like I could try three fourths, just seeing what happens at three fourths here. So this is going to become, we're going to have one over the floor. When I put three fourths into one over X, we end up with four over three. Four over three is like 1.3 repeating. The floor is going to round us down to one. This becomes one over one or just one. You could try some other points in here, like you could try seven over eight, and you'll notice the same kind of things happening. We put the reciprocal in here, this is gonna become eight over seven, but the floor of eight over seven, like that's gonna be a little over one. So again, we're at one. So you could look at a graph of this or mess with it or try a bunch of points, but what's gonna happen is everything in this region is gonna just be one. Next, just looking at this second one, doing something really similar, we could try to get a point between one third and one half just to get a sense of it. So like, let's look at five over 12. We put that in here, this is gonna become one over, take the reciprocal, the floor of 12 over five. 12 over five is like 2.4, so the floor is gonna round us down to two, and this just becomes one half. And so the same way we had everything at one here, everything in this region is actually gonna be just one half. And just notice one half, that's the same thing as our upper bound here. And we could look at more examples, but it turns out this one's gonna work the same way. This is gonna become one over three just like that. And so just by trying points or looking at a graph, we can see that all these integrals are gonna work this way. So what I can actually do is generalize any one of these integrals. I can write one of these as one over n for our upper bound. And then notice I have it where the lower bound is always one over n plus one. So we'll write that as one over n plus one here. And then for every case, we're gonna be integrating this one over n value. So that we're just integrating one over n dx, but one over n is a constant, so we could bring it up front. So when we integrate this, we're basically just integrating one so we integrate one over n and we get x over n. And we just need to evaluate this from one over n plus one to one over n. Evaluating these bounds, we're gonna end up with plugging in one over n here. This is gonna give me one over n squared minus, then plugging in one over n plus one, this is gonna give me minus one over n times n plus one. So now we have an expression for any one of these given integrals here but we actually need to sum up all these integrals to infinity. Notice here, for this one I can write this as one over one. So our n value, our n value here is starting at one, and then all the way out here, it's going all the way to infinity. So we just need to find a value for this sum from one to infinity. Okay, so now all we need to do to finish this off is just calculate this series. And the first thing I want to do is, I'm going to focus on this piece first. Let's just take this over here. So if I have one over n times n plus one, I can actually rewrite this to simplify this a little bit. I can add an n in here, but I don't want to change it, so I'll subtract an n so that we still have just a one in the numerator when these n's cancel out. But then that's going to allow me to split this into two fractions. What I can do is the first one I'll write as n plus one over n times n plus one. And then for the second one, we're just going to have this n 
over n times n plus 1. But then I can cancel out the n plus 1s here, and I can cancel an n here. So now we're just left, we have 1 in the numerator in each of these. So doing it that way, we can simplify this as 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. So now we'll just use this when I rewrite this. And then here, because we're split on the minus sign, I can actually split this into two different sums. So let's break out the one over n squared first. So this is gonna be, we're going from n equal one to infinity of one over n squared. And then we'll have the minus. And then for this second one, we'll just plug in this here. So this is gonna be one over n minus one over n plus one. But now this thing here, this is actually telescoping. We can just kind of write out some terms to see it. So like, if I'm starting at just plugging in one here, we have one over one minus one over two. And then for the next term, when n equals two, we have one half minus one third, and then we're gonna have one third minus one fourth, and then one fourth minus one fifth. And this is gonna go on and on forever, but we're gonna have, I'll just write at the end here, this is gonna be one over n minus one over n plus one, when these terms are going to infinity, but when these are going to infinity, these are all approaching zero, so we're not gonna have to worry about this end here, because that's all zero. But then looking at all this stuff, one half is gonna cancel with minus one half here, one third minus one third, one fourth minus one fourth. So what happens is everything cancels out, all we're left with is this one right here. So our value for this whole thing here is just one. Next, we'll look at this first series here, but this is actually a really well-known series. This is called the Basel problem, and we have a known value for this. The value for this series is actually just gonna be pi squared over six. So just by memorizing this value right here, we can write down our final solution. It's just gonna be pi squared over six minus one. Okay, so there you have it. Really good problem from UNSW CPMS 2023. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.